Yo, what's going on, everybody, man? It's your boy, Marcus Elbow. Welcome back to Elbow Media Studios. If this is your first time, boy, all we do over here is keep it crunk, man. Elbow Media Studio. Today, we're going to be taking another look at effects tracks inside of Beatmaker 3. The reason why I'm doing another video on effects tracks, first of all, because it's a super duper awesome app but second is because a lot of my subscribers a lot of people have been reaching out to me saying hey mark i love effects tricks but i just don't feel like i have enough control i can't turn it off when i want it to go off it either runs through the track or i just don't use it okay look today i'm going to break down how to use effects tricks with beatmaker 3 how to automate it and how to make it cut on and off and do everything that you want it to do all right look we ain't got no time to waste let's get to it come on let's roll all right, so we're going to take another look at effects tracks this week, and we are going to look at how to automate uh, effects track into your tracks and how to send the effect over to the auxiliary send. That way you can put it where you want it instead of having effects tracks play all the way through uh, in, in your track and not being able to really have a lot of control that's what we're going to be looking at today. And if you haven't seen my overview of effects tracks, I'm going to leave a card right up there for you to go check that out so that it would be a lot easier for you to follow along. And that way you could, uh, you know, know what you're doing. All right. All right. Let's jump straight into it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to highlight your master out. OK, that's the first thing you want to do. And you can highlight it in here. Or you can go back to the sequencer and you can highlight it. No, however you want to do it and then right down here at our bottom left second from the bottom icon which is our audio effect we're going to pop on that and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to add an audio effect and we're going to add we're going to go to audio units uh, effects and we're going to go to you know and we're going to add effects tracks right here okay we're going to hit that load and as you can see effects tracks popped up right there and once we do that then we can go ahead and hit that again and then it'll bring us up to the actual effects tricks, you know, for UI inside of Beatmaker 3. OK, and again, uh, you should be familiar with this if you watched the last week's tutorial. OK, so let's look at how we can automate this guy. So right, let's go ahead on and change our, our bars. So we're going to put it on eight. OK, and we're going to go ahead and listen to the track real quick. Go ahead and take that Dixie out. Okay. All right. And you already know if you just go in and you just add a few things, you can get a few things to happen. We already know that, right? Okay. So that's 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 simple, right? But let's just say if you wanted to, you know, maybe put this phase in there, right? But you don't want that phase to play all the way through the track. You just want that to come in, you know. I don't know, somewhere inside of the track, right? So let's take a look at what it's going to take to do that. First thing we're going to do is let's get back to the sequencer, right? And again, if you do not know how to maneuver around uh, Beatmaker 3, I will leave another card here for to show you how to get started with Beatmaker 3. And also arranging and working with the mixer will all be inside of my channel if you need to go back and take a look at that, okay? All right, so... Now we're back again in the sequencer and we know that we have effects tracks on our main out inside of our mixer. So in order for us to be able to manipulate the entire track, we had to put it there. So we just did. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to the right lower corner and we're going to hit track automation. This is going to bring up another uh, area inside of the sequencer where we can start manipulating that and again if you haven't watched my tutorial on how to automate um, your tracks I'm gonna leave a card here we're gonna keep leaving cards until you get it right uh, till you get every all the information that you need we're gonna keep leaving cards okay uh, now we're in automation we can go ahead on and hit this button right here which says automation and it's gonna access what do you want to do? What do you want to automate? Do you want to automate the volume? We can do pan, mute, solo, sends. I mean, we can do a lot of different things. But as you can see down here at the bottom, it says effects tracks. So we're going to go ahead and push that. And once we push that, that's going to take us into 
all of these different options we have are all the different effects that are inside of effects tracks. I'm going to be saying that a lot today. All right. So all we have to do is find out where is the effect that we want to be able to automate. OK, and that's going to be the phase, right? Or the filter. OK, and right now it has phase rate depth. I mean, it is just so many different things that you can actually do here. Let's go mix. Mix should be fine. Um, that's that's going to take it. That's going to put it to where the, the effects could be in the mix or it could be out of the mix. That should be fairly easy. OK, so let's go back to the beginning of the track. And let's just say if we wanted to start in the beginning of the track, if you look down here, once you're inside of those automation options, you will have some different options here, different tools that you can use. You have a, a binary and you have an analog. Um, uh, whichever one you want to use will depend on if you want to fade in that sound or fade out that effect or if you just want it to cut on and off. Remember, binary and analog. We're going to go with the binary section, right? And what we're going to do is we're just going to click here at the bottom. We're going to add a node and then we're going to go here and when it gets to four bars, we can either bring it right back in right there and then we can come over here when it gets to another four bars, we can cut it out and we can do this all along the track. But let's just hear how that sounds okay all right so really what you have here is you have your own and off uh, and if you look here, you have 100% and you would have zero, of course. And you can actually move this little slider so that you can see, you know, are you giving it 100% or are you giving it nothing? And what we just did, we started out with nothing and then we actually gave it 100% on that second four bars. Okay. All right. And you could easily delete these things just like you would with anything else. Looks like I'm drawing them in. Oh, I haven't highlighted that. Let's go delete. All right. And then we can go to our select button and we can select them all and then we can delete them. All right. You can go in and you can use any one of effects tracks effects. As you can see, it is a lot of them. And if you just take your time and you play around with this, remember experimentation is the best way to try to figure out what's what and what you need to do so forth and so on. If you play around with that, you can get some cool things to happen. So now let's look at another way that we could bring in effects from effects tracks inside of our mix, take it in and out. We may still have to do some automation, but it may just be a little bit, um, I don't know, easier. Sometimes dealing with these little uh, analog points and um, uh, digital points or you know binary points are a little bit funky, uh, but it works. I mean, if you take your time, uh, you can actually zoom in and, and really get, you know, down and dirty with it instead of you trying to you know do it from a a more zoomed out position it would be a lot easier um, to do it let's go to the mixer and look at a look and see if there's a way that we can do this uh without you know messing around with the automation okay now we do have this little funky uh funky piano here if i go ahead and solo that okay now what we can do is we can take this actual piano sound instead of going in and adding effects to the piano itself right we can just go in and send out that signal to an auxiliary track that has effects tracks already on it and if we go into auxiliary one and i go into my effects you can see i have effects tracks loaded right here right and if i load that up as you can see i have the x loop and i have the vinyl already ready to go let's see what happens whenever i send that over and what it does to the piano okay and all you have to do is all you have to do is set everything up over here your sins are down here uh at the bottom all right just go ahead and start bringing that up and you also have to solo your auxiliary so that you could hear it right <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Now, what's really cool, if I highlight this, right? And as you can, I don't know if you can tell, but if I if I drop the volume here, right? 
I'm going to kill the volume for my auxiliary track, right? And sometimes what you don't want to do is you don't want to hear two sounds. So you're hearing the effect playing here and then, I'm sorry, you're hearing the sound playing here and you're hearing the effect as well. But maybe you just want to hear just the effect. Right here at the bottom, you have post fader sends and you have pre fade. You want this to be pre, not post. So you want to actually, before that sound even hits the mixer, you want it to go straight over to your auxiliary track so that you could always turn this down. Now that track is playing over here and all you hear is the effect. See, it has a stronger cutoff. Right? And if I bring effects tracks back, you will see what's happening here. It's right here. And then it's going to have your vinyl there. And man, again, like I've always told you guys, this effects tracks is a beast, man. You got to start playing around with it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and set up another track to show you how to exactly get that going. OK, let's see how that sounds in the mix. That sound hot right there. All right. So, how do you how do you set that up, Mark? How do we be how do we get that going? Okay. So, this is how you get that going. If you want to have the auxiliary control your effect, right? And remember, I could send that anywhere, right? I could take the bass and send it over there, anything. I mean, let's just experiment with that just for a second. I don't know how it's going to sound, but you know, let's check it out. Let's solo the um the track. We're going to solo the auxiliary track and then we're going to bring in that bass and let's hear how it sounds <laughs> so now that bass is actually following the same pattern as the funky piano that's pretty cool man that's pretty cool and all i gotta do is turn it off now it's just it's not it's not adhering to that effect Right? Ain't that cool? Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? All right, so let's go ahead on and look at how to set up an auxiliary track, okay? All right, first thing you need to do is you already have a track here. If you don't have this track here, all you have to do is go to your go to your sequencer. You can add a track, and then it asks you what type of track you want to add. Uh, you want to add all your track, new bank, or auxiliary. Let's go ahead and go with auxiliary, and we're going to say it's number three. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go back into our mixer, and number three should be right there, okay? And all you have to do, just like you would do with any other track, is you just need to add effects tracks to it. So we're going to go to our audio effects. We're going to go to add. We're going to go to audio unit. Then we're going to go to... Uh, v3 and we're going to go to effects tracks and now effects tracks is loaded up okay we can figure out what type of sound we want to put in there remember we were using that phaser earlier so we could always bring that back around right and now since we have that back around we can exit on up out of there okay and then we can figure out you know what track we want to add we can add any track we want okay so let's just since we're already on the piano let's take a look at the piano again we're going to solo the piano Right. We're going to also solo that first auxiliary track and we're going to solo the third auxiliary track. Let's push play. OK. Now, I haven't send uh, I haven't did a send for any of the other sends going to the auxiliary for that piano. So what I have to do, I only have two available for me right here. But if I need to see more, all I have to do is click all sends. Right. And now I have more sins here at my disposal and you can use up to eight audio uh, auxiliary tracks inside of Beatmaker 3. All right. Let's go ahead and send it over. All right. As you can see right here, whenever I sent it over, I start getting a signal right here. OK, let's go ahead and bring that off. And now I can control how much of that effect I want. Right. And I can go into my effects, get back into effects tracks, and I can work with this if I don't like the way it sounds. All right. 
Or if I don't like that, I can say, man, I don't like that. Let's put some reverb in there. Awesome delay. Right? So however you want to do that, whatever effect that you want to bring into there, you can bring that all into uh, your auxiliary and control it from here. And what's cool, since you are using it, you're using the pre-audio uh, send, you know, the pre-fader, you don't even have to have your piano playing over here. You're just getting that full effect from that effect. You know what I'm saying? Full effect from that effect, right? <laughs> you can bring it up. But what you're going to get when you bring it up is you're going to get that piano playing over that effect instead of getting a full effect. And the reason why you want to get the full effect when you're using effects tracks because effects tracks has a way of manipulating the sound and doing some unique things and you don't want to have two sounds playing to where they're both being you know they're playing with each other and they're fighting each other you know what i'm saying that's you don't want that as you can see here it sounds like two sounds but if i go ahead and take that out right if i bring this back Right? Yes. I like that right there. Now, I know what you're saying to yourself. You're like, Mark, okay, yeah, that's cool. But, uh, you know, what if I don't want that to play... Um, in the entire track right and I, I hear you you know if you're like hey man you know i don't want you know essentially that's the same thing i was doing before mark i don't want that to happen i want that to you know what i'm saying go away well of course you can do that all you have to do is automate your sin it's just that easy or you can automate this uh your auxiliary the same way we did before all you have to do is highlight, you know, your track or whatever. Let's get back into the sequencer view. It's a little bit easier to work from there. OK, and we already have it highlighted. We already have it highlighted here. All we have to do, is we have the track automation already ready to go. It's going to ask us, what do we want to do? And as you can see here, we have our sin there. Right. And if we start from the beginning of this track and we can go in and we can automate fairly easy but you can actually draw it in and then have it automate let's hear it and take a look here that's automation right there as you see it going down just that easy guys i promise you this is this is mad easy man this is pretty cool it is just that easy when it comes to doing automation inside of BeatMaker 3, using automation uh, as your way of, uh, you know, bringing effects tracks in and bringing it out. It is just that easy. So this should solve the problem of, you know, the problem people are having with effects tracks and, and having to, you know, not knowing how they're going to be able to pull it if they don't want it to play and having it play when they want it to play all right hey look guys i hope y'all found this tutorial uh helpful uh it can be a little confusing uh, even a little weird trying to work with the automation but i guarantee you if you just zoom in a little bit and work from a micro uh level it'll be a little bit easier to mess with those nodes and move around inside of the automation section and i hope that you found value in taking your track and moving it over, taking that effect sin, sending it over to the auxiliary and using those auxiliary tracks to manipulate and change and handle uh, effects tracks or any type of effect uh, inside of those auxiliary scenes. All right. Look, man, I want to tell you, I'm serious about this. We've reached 1800 subscribers. I am so appreciative. 
I appreciate that you guys have been coming back watching the videos, you've been sharing the videos, and you've been commenting. Remember, don't stop doing that because every time that you comment, you share, you like, all of those things, it helps YouTube's algorithm find this video, find videos like this, even if it ain't me, even if it's another, uh, it's another YouTuber, uh, get their stuff recognized and also to make other people find a video so that it could help them out and help them in their journey to becoming a better producer or just learning how to work with the iOS ecosystem. All right. All right. Look, man, my name is Mark Elbow. This has been Elbow Media Studios. I appreciate y'all coming by. Y'all know what it is, man. Hey, I'll see y'all in the next video. All right. All right, man. One. Peace. <laughs>